Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. This past summer, Vermont's only law school expanded its name and degrees offered and installed a new president. Celebrating its 50th year in South Royalton, Vermont Law and Graduate School has broadened its offerings with master's degrees while maintaining its advocacy approach to legal education. To learn more, we are joined by President Rod Smola, former president of Furman University, a litigator who has presented before the U.S. Supreme Court, author of over a hundred articles, and former dean of both Washington and Lee and University of Richmond Law Schools. Welcome, President Smola. Thanks, France. Great to be with you. So, um, Vermont Law and Graduate School introduced several changes last summer, including the name change. What does that name change mean for the school and what you might want to accomplish? So the name change is not just a change in the name, it's a change in the basic structure of the school. There's always been a, a very distinguished law school here in South Royalton. The idea is to create a second school, a graduate school that will offer a potpourri of programs that align with the things that the school has always been known for, offering largely master's degrees to students who are interested in things like environmental policy or animal protection or energy law or, uh, or related public policy fields, but don't want to be lawyers. They want to have expertise in these areas, but they want to use that expertise for other sorts of careers. And so to make that much more significant, to add courses, to add faculty, to add opportunities for students in those areas, we've created a graduate school which will live side by side with the law school. Terrific. And, you know, certainly there's, you're known for environmental. What are those key academic programs that are, that are still right there? So I think the, the school is really now known for two things. Of course, it's always been one of the leading environmental and energy schools in the country. Those two things are inextricably intertwined because you can't talk about climate change and talk about protecting our environment without dealing with how we provide energy to the world. And so that has always been one of the signature identities of the school. But more recently, the school has also placed a great deal of emphasis on social justice issues, on restorative justice. and I'm very excited about the fact that these two things are compatible and, and linked together. And, and so environmental justice, which explores how our policies regarding how we protect the world that we live in, impact social justice for people and, and, and underprivileged populations is a, another major focus of what we're doing here. Terrific. And you, know, you have cr quite a resume, partially summarized in, in the intro. Why did you want to take on this leadership role at Vermont Law and Graduate School? Well, it's, it's interesting. This is, uh, this is uh, basketball season, and I just listened <laughs> to a uh, great interview with Mike Krzyzewski, the famous coach at Duke, and I went to Duke Law School, so of course I'm a fan. Uh, and I know the University of Vermont is going to the big dance, and so it's exciting for a lot of folks here. The reason I bring it up is uh, he talked about what motivated him. And I thought, wow, it's very similar to what motivates me. I care about young people. I care about helping uh, this great school train a new generation of folks that will be leading us in the legal profession, leading us in these other enormously important areas of public policy. Uh, I've been fortunate to be an educator and, and a practicing lawyer and have loved that. And the mission of the school and the chance to try to work with other folks who have tremendous talent um, to make sure that it's going to be here for a long, long time and flourishing for a long, long time was exciting to me. So is it a challenge um, or, or an asset that the school is in a quite rural town in, in South Royalton? Well, I love it. I mean, and, and it has some elements of challenge because you have to have students that are willing to live in this beautiful part of the, of the world, uh, a rural part of the world, yet very sophisticated and, and culturally alive. Uh, but it's also, I think, a tremendous asset. I think that we have students from all over the United States that not only find the mission attractive, but find the environment attractive. And I like to say that um, that Vermont is not just a place, it's a state of mind. It's an <laughs> attitude and, uh, and it's infectious and, and, and it grows on you. And I think that 
being right here in the middle of the of, the, of this part of the uh, upper valley and being so uh, connected to this beautiful environment that we're part of is uh, is for me at least an asset. Well, it's good to, good to hear you think that. And uh, uh -huh. you know, it, it seems that all educational institutions are, are challenged financially these days. And law schools were hit particularly mm -hmm. hard following the 2008 recession. Uh, you have clearly have management and finance savvy from past successes. How do you see Vermont Law School thriving into the future? I think we have a really bright future. Uh, we are, I'm sure, going to be financially stable and prosperous uh, forever, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, it's a blend of attracting students to our new programs and to our traditional programs. Uh, we'll be starting a major fundraising campaign soon, marking the 50th anniversary of the school. Uh, and of course, being uh, careful about uh, how we use our resources. I'm very excited, among other things, that for our basic law program, we've launched uh, a very ambitious online program. And we expect to have nearly 50 students in that uh, this coming fall. We have about 20 students in the program right now. And that brings students to the school from all over the United States uh, who are mostly studying re at remotely. They spend a bit of time here in Vermont. And, and that will not only enrich us in terms of the types of students that we're able to attract, uh, but it will, of course, help us very much financially. Well, let's talk a little bit more about your, your students. Like, who do you see as a typical student? What, what kinds of students should consider Vermont Law? So in one sense, there is no typical student in that our students come from all over the country. They come from around the world. They come from all different religious traditions, political views. So in, in that sense, it's an enormously diverse student body. And, and so to, to have a sort of tip, typical profile is a bit misleading. Uh, but what, what I will say is that of all the places I have ever been at, and I've taught at nearly a dozen American universities and, and spent some time at international schools, I've never seen students that are more idealistic and altruistic. They are attracted to our mission. They want to be change agents for the world. They really care. They care about environmental things. They care about social justice. And if there is one typicality to them, it is that uh, idealism. And we want to make sure we don't dampen that. We want to make sure we empower that. Yeah, I love the, uh, some of the pictures that you've also sent of, of students with on farms with animals. They're, um, they're very engaged locally. And I'd like to speak to that a little bit. How does Vermont's law school and uh, uh, law and graduate school impact Vermont and Vermonters? Well, it impacts it a lot. And it, 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 I would say it basically in two ways. First, we serve the state and we serve the state's uh, people uh, in ways that often go unnoticed. We have so many legal clinics that provide legal services, for example, to many, many different elements of the population of Vermont, including not only folks that can't get access to legal services, typically, uh, but those who are central to the identity of the state. And so our programs involving uh, food and agriculture law, for example, are dear to the um, the core of the of the prosperity of the state. We also serve it in a different way, and that's a cultural resource. Our faculty members, our students, uh, have expertise across the wide expanse of issues that, that face the country and face the world. And many, many of our programs are available to the public. And I, I, I like to think we contribute a great deal to the intellectual life and to the cultural life of the state by being a resource for those uh, important issues. Do you find that your students uh, end up staying in the state? There's, a, there's always, everybody's talking about, you know, how, how can we get more young people to stay? Are, are these, some of these students staying in Vermont, do you find? Oh, there, sure, sure, there's no question. So, it, I mean, I'm sure Vermonters have heard the stories, you know, a million times. People come here and they fall in love with it uh, and, and they wanna stay. And I think that's terrific and, and I think that the more we can have pathways to students who think this is a great part of the country to live in, the more we can provide opportunities for them here. Uh, that is another important thing that the school does. We bring people here from all over the United States and, and many have never even been to New England, um, but they are, um, they are seduced by it. They, it's beauty, uh, the, the charm of the people, and they wanna stay. And uh, I think that's terrific. I'm a new Vermonter, and I'm looking forward to attracting more new Vermonters. Okay. And, and as an expert in, in First Amendment rights, libel and defamation law, 
What are your concerns in this age of Twitter and other influential social media that affect so many young people and all of us, really? Yeah, I mean, this is a, a time of enormous ferment. I'm in the middle of uh, some of the biggest uh, cases being litigated right now. Of course, can't really talk much about those, but but I think that the uh, the world of social media has had a gigantic impact on our discourse, and it's good and bad. On the one hand, there's a voice for everyone, and people who want to have their views known are able to do that. On the other hand, we know that we're awash in a lot of misinformation, uh, a lot of, of propaganda, and so there are societies around the world that suppress truth, and so that balance between uh, wanting to have a robust free culture and also needing to have accountability and some place where we can separate truth from falsehood that's what i've been dealing with my entire life it's a fascinating area and it's as uh, volatile today as it ever has been so, uh, uh, you know, Vermont law um, has an articulation agreement with the University of Vermont. I, I just want to quickly touch on UVM doesn't have a law school. Um, do, do, do many students matriculate? Is that an easy process? They do. It's an easy process. We'd love to have more. And uh, for folks that are interested, we're happy, we, we, we visit the UVM campus a lot. Uh, I intend to be there a lot. I'm going to be doing um, some lectures throughout this year. Uh, up in Burlington to try to uh, get people um, excited about some of the things that we're doing here. And we, um, we welcome you. It's an easy visit. Come on down and think about this fascinating so profession. Um, not only our JD degrees, but our master's degrees um, right here in the state where you got your, your college degree. We just had your website up. It's www.vermontlaw.edu for people that more more information about Vermont law and graduate school. Um, Rod Smola, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And once again, thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.